Well, uh, good day, wherever you are, and uh, praise the Lord for his uh, blessings that he give us and uh, his sustenance um, on our lives, of our lives every day. And so welcome to our nightly presentation once again, and uh, today we are dealing with uh, uh, the sword of the spirit which is the word of God. And so I'd like us to pray and then be able to share in this uh, marvelous blessings. Our Father, which art in heaven, receive honor and glory, for you have seen it good that we study your word. And we pray that uh, this word may bring profit unto our souls, that uh, we may be reconciled unto thee. And Lord, that you may guide us into all paths of righteousness in Jesus' name. Amen. And so uh, I thought that I could speak uh, about uh, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And uh, this one, I got it in the book of uh, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17, uh, which says, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. You know, many a times we really neglect the word of God, whether it be the word of God in nature, whether it be the word of God through the still uh, a small voice, whether it be the word of God as it's written or spoken by the ministers, we play down um, the role of God, which is uh, an essential part of our daily living. The word of God is not just uh, any other kind of word because um, we find that uh, as Christ was faithful, so his word is faithful. As Christ was full of grace, so his word is full of grace. And so when we approach the word of God, we are not approaching it, it as um, any other word, but we are approaching it as a revelation of Christ himself because Christ is the word of God. Another issue about the word of God, we read in um, Hebrews chapter four, verses 12, Hebrews chapter four, verses 12, uh, we are told that um, the, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing a sand of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and it's a designer of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. And so the word of God is not like the word of man because it's a designer of thoughts. It's a designer of um, uh, every thoughts of man. And then in uh, John chapter 6, verse 63, we, we find that... Um, the word of God is uh, spirit and um, uh, life. In the division of Psalms, um, we are told that uh, the entrance of this word, the entrance of this word in Psalms, the division 119 verses 130, the entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the symbol. And uh, when you go downward in uh, Psalms 119, verses uh, 171 to 174, you get that my lips shall utter praise when thou hast taught me thy statutes. My tongue shall speak of thy word for all thy commandments are righteous. Let thine hand help me for I have chosen thy precept. I have longed for salvation, O Lord, and thy law is my delight. Those, those are some of the things that are spoken about the word of God. And so we cannot just take the word of God as something lightly in our lives. And so let us learn uh, in the scriptures uh, how this word is helpful unto us. We are told that, um, uh, by the way, in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, uh, we are told, Paul exhorting, Paul um, uh, speaking to Timothy, he tells him that uh, thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. 
and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach also others. And uh, in Titus chapter 1, verses 9, we read that we have the word um, referred as the faithful one. In Matthew chapter 24, verses 45, we are told that hold fast to the faithful one. And then uh, 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 again, we are told um, that uh, uh, in uh, uh, this is Matthew 24, verse 45, we, are, we find that uh, we are told who then is the faithful and wise servant. So we have a faithful God and we have faithful men. And what are these faithful men to be found doing? They are found to be feeding uh, the word of God uh, to the servants as meat in due season. You understand that meat in due season is something that brings help to the receiver of it. And so this word in Hebrews, uh, in uh, Romans chapter 10, again, we read of this word of God. I'm just looking at uh, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And how is this word of God? so different from the words of men. How important is this word unto us? In uh, the book of Romans chapter 10, we find in uh, verse uh, 17, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. There is nothing that instills faith in a Christian but the word of God. And then uh, the very same word in Ephesians. I like this topic because, you know, the way sometimes we joke with the word of God and we handle it lightly. The book of Ephesians chapter 1, verses uh, 11 to 13, it says, talking about Jesus Christ whom we have believed, it says, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestined according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ, in whom he also trusted after that ye had the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. So sealing can never be done without the hearing of the word, which will give us the faith that we need to be able to walk in the light of the Son of God. In John chapter 17, verse 17, we find that our sanctification comes by the truth, the word of God. Sanctify them with the truth, your word is truth. And uh, in John chapter 15, uh, it should be verses three. Let me just go there in the book of John, chapter 15. John chapter 15, Christ says, verse three, now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. And so we get that uh, our cleansing really comes uh, from uh, the word of God. It doesn't come from anything else, but it's from the word of God. Of God. And also, I just want to highlight uh, something that uh, in John chapter 14, in the promise of the comforter, uh, Christ says that he will manifest himself to his disciples. And in the book of John chapter 14, Judah said unto him, not his carrier, John 14, verses 22. Judah said unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is that thou will manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, if a man love me, he will keep my words, and my father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our board with him. And so the word of God is the vehicle to sanctification. It is the vehicle to being made clean. It is uh, the very sword or the tack or the sharp point of the Holy Spirit. And so there needs to be 
an encouragement from the shepherds of the flock to encourage the congregation to feast on the word of God, which has uh, abundance of blessings. And so uh, we find that uh, those who receive the word of God, they cannot be deceived with the word of men. For when the word of God is received as the word of men, it becomes that in its power, in its efficiency, it simply the word of men. But when it is received as the word of God, it brings about genuine faith and a person can stand strong in that word. In fact, in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah, Chapter uh, let me see Isaiah chapter in the book of Isaiah, I'll be giving you a chapter in a, a few moments. Isaiah, we are told this about this word. In Isaiah chapter 8, verses uh, 16, we find, bind up the testimony, seal the law among my disciples. And then in Isaiah 8, 20, to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. And so, in the word of God, there is light that cannot be found in the words of men. You know, today a man will speak one thing and tomorrow he speaks another thing. But the word that has come from the mouth of the Lord is everlasting, it is efficient, and then it is able to educate man, to thoroughly win him from errors, and to rebuke and to exhort and to comfort. And so uh, those who receive the word of God and feed uh, on the word of God, we are told in John chapter 1, verses 12 and verses 12, John chapter 1, verses 11 and 12, they are made the children of God. They come into possession of the power that cannot be possessed by are uh, listening to the words of men. And so uh, you find that uh, in the book of Matthew, there is uh, another good illustration of uh, uh, the centurion when he came to Christ to go and uh, be able to heal. Um, I presume it is this, his servant. Let us go to the book of Matthew chapter 11, the book of Matthew, chapter 11. And uh, we thank the Lord for the blessings of the rain. It has not been raining for the last six months in Kenya, but now it is pouring down right now as I present this. And we want that as even the literal rain falls on the ground and prepares the seed, which is the word of God to germinate. So the Holy Spirit shall fall on our hearts to make the soul ready to be able to receive the word of truth, which is the word of God. How powerful is the word of God? This will get an illustration in the book of um, Matthew chapter 11. And uh, Matthew chapter 11, chapter, Chapter 8, sorry, sorry, sorry for that. Matthew chapter 8, the story of the centurion and uh, his servant. From verse 5 we read, and uh, when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him, and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy, grievously commanded. And Jesus said unto him, I'll come, and heal thee, heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak 
the word only. And my servant shall be healed. For I am a man and authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go, and he goeth. And to another, come, and he cometh. And to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in uh, Israel. And so the power of the word is illustrated by the story of this centurion with the servant who was laying sick at home. And so he, say, he tells Jesus Christ, you see, I am a man and authority. I tell this one, go, and he goeth. I tell this one, come, and he cometh. You don't need to come under my roof. Just speak the word. And then when you speak the word, all that you need to happen shall be able to happen. That is the power of uh, the word of God when it comes for him. And uh, uh, let us see what it says about this in Isaiah chapter 55, the book of Isaiah chapter 55. Isaiah chapter 55, and uh, this is coming from uh, verses 10, we read, for as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I send it. And so the Lord is saying that uh, his word is that powerful. It's like the rain. And whatever he has decreed it to accomplish, when it goeth forth from his mouth, it shall be able to accomplish. It doesn't return there void, but it accomplishes what uh, really it has been uh, set forth to accomplish. This is the power of the word of God. It is because we don't appreciate this word, that is why we read it as even something so casual. We read it as something like a novel. We read it like a story, but this is a love letter from God to man so that man may have a fellowship with God and uh, uh, his maker, the Lord Jesus Christ and his redeemer. This word of God that we are speaking of in the book of First John, look at it again. First John, the book of First John, I'll tell you of what this word can be able to do once again. The book of First John, and uh, I'm reading from uh, chapter two. We are told from verses 12, I write unto you little children because your sins are forgiven for his name's sake. I write unto you fathers because you have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you young men because you have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you little children because you have known the father. I have written unto you because we have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, listen, young men, because you are strong. And what has made you strong? And the word of God abided in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. So the word of God abiding in young men, abiding in fathers, makes them strong, and they can be able to overcome the wicked one. Also, when you look in the division of Psalms 119, verses 9 to 11, the division of Psalms 119, verses 
9 to 11. Where withal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed there to according to thy word? Amen. With my whole heart have I sought thee, or let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Will it be, or is it that uh, the reason why we are being overcome with the enemy every now and then, it is no, it's because we have not uh, taken the word of God by faith and hidden it in our heart so that when the enemy comes, he finds that we have built a bulwark of scriptures not only for memorization, but for the strength. And then the spirit can find a vehicle in which to work in our hearts. Is it because we haven't taken the word of Christ and digested it and assimilated it? And then the Holy Spirit will not find a place to rest because the Holy Spirit has to find a place where there is a foundation of faith. And faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. And so without faith, no man on this earth will please God. And without the word of God, we have been told in Romans chapter 10, that no one on this earth can have faith. And so the word of God bringeth faith in our hearts. And then we have faith. We have a place where the Holy Spirit can abide and be able to instruct the man of God in all um, righteousness. In the book of Matthew chapter 4, still on the same theme of uh, the sword of the spirit, the word of God, how was Jesus able to overcome the wicked one? And you know where I'm headed. Matthew chapter 4 and uh, verse 1, then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward unhungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord. So if we want to have life in us, if we want the impartation of the Holy Spirit, we must accept the vehicle in which the Holy Spirit travels. That is the word of God. Without the reception of the word of God by faith, you will never unlock in your life the power of the Holy Spirit. And so man shall not live by bread alone, but by every one that proceeded from the mouth of the Lord. In Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3, he gave them the manna. He gave them the word of God. He gave them this manner to demonstrate that he is the Lord that sustained them. And so, um, as we take the literal food so that we may be healthy physically, we take the word of God so that we may be healthy spiritually. And uh, in Psalms, we talk of the children becoming wise, the children becoming intellect, and the children becoming reverent. How do they come to the disposition of being wise, of being reverence, of being obedient, and having power in them to unlock the reservoir of heaven and get the blessings therein? Psalms 109. And uh, look at uh, these verses um, from 105. And I'll start a little bit earlier and go until uh, I'll start from uh, verse 97 and then go downward to verses 105. Sometimes we wonder, why are our children running evil? How are our children just interested in other things? We are told, oh, how I love thy law, it is my meditation all the day. Thou, through thy commandments, have made me wiser than mine enemies, for they are ever with me. We think that taking the children into school 
and they sit there for 12 hours, sorry, for eight to 10 hours and trying to study books and cramming things so that they may pass exam, our children are becoming wiser. No, the psalmist say, the reason he has become wiser than his enemies, it is because the commandments and the words of God are his teacher. They dwell in him. Verses 99, I have more understanding than all my teachers for thy testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the ancients because I keep thy precepts. I have refrained my feet from every evil way that I might keep thy word. I have not departed from thy judgment for thou hast taught me. How sweet are thy words unto my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through thy precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. And then cometh the famous verse, the division of Psalms 119-105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And so this is some of the things that we are getting from the word of God. And, uh, you know, the word of God becomes a personality to them who believe in it. Remember, the, Christ himself is the word of God made audible. But the word of God internalized and meditated upon becomes a personality in them that believe in it. And so, uh, fools, because of their transgression and because of their iniquities, are afflicted. Their soul abhorreth all manner of meat, and they draw near unto the gates of death. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saveth them out of their distress. And how do he, does he save them from their distress? You read that um, uh, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. He sent his word to accomplish it. This is thought is also in, uh, 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 in the book of Psalms that... Uh, when uh, the children of Israel were troubled in their wickedness, he sent his word. I presume that is uh, Exodus chapter 15, verses 26, if I'm not wrong. Exodus chapter 15, verses 26. Exodus chapter 15, verse 26, it says, and said, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I'll put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. And then uh, we are told that uh, he sent his word and healed it. This uh, should be in the division of Psalms. And let me just give you the verse. Uh, he sent forth. Um, uh, Psalms 107 verses 20. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. And in many instances where Jesus Christ is healing, uh, the people who are afflicted in many ways, he spoke the word of peace to their minds and they were restored. He spoke the word and then the lepers were able to be cleansed. He spoke his word and the, le and, um, the, the lame were able to jump on their feet. And so this is how powerful the word of God is. And uh, it is only the fools who despise it and to those who are being saved. Uh, 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 the word of God is powerful to do for them what no other word uh, can do for any other person. And so uh, there is an infinite measure of difference between the words of man and the words of God. The words of men can be measured together with the words of men. And when he sends his word to heal someone, whether it be of physical or spiritual trouble, it is all the same. When he sends his word, it will carry the power to heal 
uh, the physical condition, when he sends his word, it will be able to be able to heal man of his spiritual maladies. The, the word comes with the same power, but to accomplish different things. To man, it is a word of salvation that is sent from God that will make him to prosper. And, uh, um, uh, and uh, in, in, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 15, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 15, Paul tells uh, Timothy about this word of God, and that that from uh, a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Now, when he sends the snow and the rain, it maketh the earth bring forth and bud. So uh, thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. The same way that uh, this word will attend to your physical maladies, it will be able to attend to your spiritual problems if, uh, uh, if, uh, if you take it in uh, by uh, faith. Uh, and so, uh, as I was saying that um, the words of men, you know, the reason why we are not being attended to by the power of the Holy Spirit or many conversion or success in our evangelistic campaigns, we are speaking words of men and philosophies of men. We have become trained in, uh, in uh, memorizing the scriptures so that uh, we may look good in front of the people and they may say, oh, look at this man. He doesn't have even to open up his Bible. The word is in his head. We, we don't read this one to get an experience, to get converted, but so that the men may be able to see us that we know this and uh, uh, we know that. But then think about it. If we read the scripture so that uh, we may behave like this, then uh, we shall just be having information. We will be taking the word of God as any other word. And so when it comes from us, it will be the word of men and not the word of God. But if we take the word of God, internalize it, ask of the Holy Spirit to be able to minister to us so that we may understand this word and the Holy Spirit finds the foundation of the word of God, and then it is the fertile ground that it can work with so that you may not be deceived. You know, sometimes we are deceived because uh, we take the words of men. We don't unlock the word of, of, of God by uh, uh, the Holy Spirit, or the Holy Spirit will want to work on our hearts, but there's no vehicle, there's no word that uh, it can use to work uh, on our hearts with. And so, uh, 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 we get to a place where uh, 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 the Holy Spirit cannot work for us and in us. We don't read the word to internalize it and experience it and uh, see the same word changing our lives so that we may be able to prescribe the same to the people. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not taking the place of uh, Christ out of the picture. In fact, Christ himself is the word of God made audible. And uh, 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 the Bible is the word of God written by ink and paper, but when taken by faith, it is his revealed will unto us. And so uh, the words of the scripture, take note. We read in 2 Peter 1, 20, uh, 1 verse 21, for the prophecy, you know, came not in the old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. But that Holy Ghost that moved those holy men to speak, it says in the first epistle, was the spirit of Christ. When you go back to uh, First Peter chapter 1, verse 12, the spirit of Christ in them made them to prophesy about these things. So if the author of this word is the Holy Spirit, we can be sure if we take it by faith, the same spirit which is the author of the same word will accompany that one into our hearts. 
and be able to bring a transformation. And as it carried these holy men and they did holy things, so those who receive these words, they will not be receiving nothing else but the Holy Spirit, the same author of that word. And then it will be Christ within the hope of um, glory. It will be Christ within the hope of glory. And uh, we are told in the book of Romans that uh, if we do not walk in the flesh, Romans chapter 8, but walk in the spirit, then uh, we will not gratify the sinful lust of the flesh. Again, you go that in the book of uh, Galatians chapter 6. This one, when it is in us, it helps us to be able to fight all manner of temptation. In Colossians chapter 3, verses 16, Colossians chapter 3, verses 16, we are told, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. When you look at the margin of the revised version, it says some ancient authorities render it of the Lord, others read of God. And so let the word of the Lord or let the word of God dwell in you richly. You see, it is the word of Christ, of the spirit of Christ, and the word of God that is to dwell in you, and then you will have the same mind that Christ had. You know, when Christ was on earth, he came to do the will of God. And how did he know the will of God? He says, whatever I hear my father speak, so I do it. Which means, if we do, which means if we do the word of God, we shall be obeying the voice of God. And then we shall be accomplishing the word of God and not our own self doing our own things. And so uh, the very word of God, which is Jesus Christ, became flesh and dwelt among us. And when he dwelt among us, we saw the glory as the glory of the only begotten Son of God. This, this point really catches me off guard and uh, uh, it, it brings an impression in me. It, uh, I, I can't explain the experience of this thought. Before being begotten, Christ existed as the thought of God. And then he was expressed. Don't, I, I won't go into the issue of how he was begotten and all that stuff. Those are the mysteries that remain with God. But we are told that Christ is the thought of God made audible, which means he existed as the thought before he was manifested as a personality, he was the thought of God. And then that thought became audible and it became flesh. It became a personality. And then it became flesh on this earth. And this thought of God and the word of God that uh, was manifested, we are told that we saw the glory as the glory of the only begotten son of God. Why is that point so important then to me? Those who are born of the spirit and of the word, <clears throat> that seed, we are told that um, they will shine forth. They will shine forth. Think about that for a moment. The word which became flesh gave us the glory as the glory of the only begotten Son of God. So if this word is in us, then it will bring light unto our heart. The word of the Lord is a lamp and a light. Now, light is not something that can be hidden under a bushel or a table. Just like the word was made flesh and it could not hide the glory. So this word partaken 
we are told it becomes the light. That word in us is light. And then this light can be able to shine over all over the world. And then it dispels the darkness that is all over the world. And so let this word dwell in you richly. It means that uh, you will manifest the same light. In the book of 1 John chapter 3, verse 9, it says that uh, whoever is born of God does not continue to commit sin because uh, the seed of he who has born him remaineth in him and he cannot sin. And so this word, we are told that in God, God is light. And if God is light, and the word is light, then if we partake of this word, then we become the bearers of light also. We cannot shine with the words of men. We cannot give light that will expel darkness by the words of men. We can only give the light that will expel darkness by the word of God. In fact, uh, talking about uh, how we are born, we are told that um, we are born of this um, uh, seed. And uh, let me rush there to the book of First Peter chapter 1. And uh, we start from verse 21. First Peter chapter 1 verses 21 who by him do believe in God that raised him up from, who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth, that word of truth through the spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that you love one another with pure heart fervently. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Praise the living God. That we are born of a seed, the word of God, which is eternal and liveth forever. And so we find that if we are taking in this word and we are transformed with it, we are partaking of eternality. We are partaking of uh, eternal life. And so there should be no quibbles about the word of God. There should be no controversies about the word of God. There should be no arguments of the word of God. Because this word partaken of, it bringeth um, the wisdom in how to deal with different issues of life. In fact, we are told that uh, the gospel is a simplifier of all the world problems. The gospel. And what is the gospel? The gospel is the good news about the life of Jesus Christ, uh, his, uh, sac his sacrifice for sins, his resurrection, his, uh, his priesthood, his prophetic office, and uh, finally his king, uh, uh, the, the kingship office. And so this gospel, this word of God taken in bringeth wisdom and it simplifies says, uh, the world problems. You see now that this world is fighting uh, with the various problems that can only be simplified by the word of God. If all were Christians and partake of the word of God, then you know what? the spirit will find an entrance into all our hearts and then this worst passion shall not be stirred amongst the people who are living on this world. And so we are told that we are born by the word of God, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. It is plain, therefore, that the spirit of God dwells in the word of God. And so when one is born of the word, he is indeed born of the spirit because the Holy Spirit uh, uh, um, begets in your heart a new being in the image of God. And we are told in John 6, 63 that the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and uh, they are life. And so uh, 
if you have ever been uh, a keen reader of the Bible and where prophetic utterances are made and where somebody wanted to pass some important point, you will find that he says that the Lord says or the scripture says what it means that uh, God is speaking and let everyone listen. Why should everyone listen when God is speaking? It is because the word that cometh from the word of God, we have seen that it will accomplish that which even the rain accomplishes. It will do marvelous things in the lives of uh, the receiver. And so um, by the word of God, men shall be, uh, by, by, by the words of the men, uh, we find that um, uh, 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 Either men will be condemned or justified by the words that they speak, and any idle word will bring condemnation to the people. And so if we will also pass the judgment, we have to speak of the words of God, because it is only these words that are pure and um, are uh, accepted before the Lord. Uh, remember, we are dealing with the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. I haven't replaced the word with the spirit, yet I can negate that this, the, the, the word itself is the vehicle of the Holy Spirit because it is when the Lord speaketh that uh, things happen. This word that we are talking about, we, want, we are looking at its power and how the Holy Spirit finds our uh, uh, a ready place or a good foundation to work on. Uh, look at uh, the book of uh, First Kings. First Kings, and it is interesting. First Kings, chapter seventeen. Interesting, the power of the word of God. First Kings, chapter seventeen, and Elijah the Tishabite was of the inhabitants of Gilead said unto Ahab, as the Lord God of Israel liveth before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, and that is three and a half years, you find that in James chapter 5 verse 17, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. Think about it. The word of God is enough to shut the heavens from bringing the rain upon the land. The word of God is able to unlock the reservoirs of heaven so that the rain may fall. And this very same word, it has this creative and restorative power. We find that uh, in Psalms, <clears throat> the division of Psalms, uh, the division of Psalms 33. Let us go to Psalms. 33, Psalms 33, we are just looking at the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Psalms 33, Psalms 33, and uh, we are told in uh, verses 6, by the word of the Lord were the heavens made and all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. So when the word of God comes out, it comes out with the breath of God. And that is the power of the Holy Spirit. So when God speaks forth, it then comes out with the Holy Spirit, the power of God. And so if we are speaking of the word of God and the word of God, it is accompanied by the power of the Holy Spirit. Psalms uh, 29 Verse 3, the voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thundereth. The Lord is upon many waters. And um, we are told that uh, he spoke and they were created. He spoke his words and um, they were created. And so uh, if we want that recreation also, we must have... Uh, the word of God in uh, our lives. And uh, looking at um, 
psalms once again and i have come to realize that uh, the psalmist have a lot of things to speak about the word of god in psalms 104 verse 30 thou sendest forth thy spirit they are created and thou renewest the face of the face of the war of uh, the earth and that, that is what we found in uh, psalms 33 verse 6 by the word of the lord were the heavens made and all the host of them by the breath of his um, word. Also looking in the book of Hebrews, the book of Hebrews, um, the, the, the book of Hebrews, we read uh, of uh, how this word also is powerful. Hebrews chapter 1 verses 3 who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had he had by himself purged our sins sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high so everything is being upheld in this world by the power uh, of the word or um, as um, we are told uh, the word he is upholding all things by the word of uh, his power that is how powerful this word is as uh, we try to bring this to an end in second timothy we talked about it a little bit all scriptures given by inspiration of god or um, as a young uh, translation says is god breath now as god breathed into man the breath of life and so he became a living soul so god breathed into human speech and it became a living word and the spirit uh, of god put into the breath of life and the word of god is a living thing a living power it is the holy ghost um a, 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 a vehicle that uh, uh, bringeth the gifts unto those who will receive them and uh, it is by believing this word that um, uh, we are told that um, be careful what you are hearing. In the seven letters, or the seven letters to the seven churches, it says, whoever has an ear, let him hear what the spirit speaketh that is how important the word that comes from the lord is because if we will not be a diligent in what we are hearing then you know what we may catch up something else but whoever has an ear let him hear what the spirit speaketh and we understand that spiritual things are spiritual design and so if we are spiritual, we shall hear spiritual things and then we shall become spiritual men. Whatsoever is born of flesh is flesh, but whatsoever is born of the spirit, it is spirit. And so, and how are we born? We are born with that word, that incorruptible seed, which is eternal, which is uh, uh, life-giving and eternal. And so whenever you sit down to listen, Ask yourself, what are you listening to? Ask yourself, are you hearing the spirit speak? Or you are just hearing men speak? Are you hearing the Lord speak to your heart? Or you are listening to fables? We are shaped by the things we listen to. We are shaped by the things we put in the frontal lobe. And so be sure as a Christian that you are not listening to things that make you unchrist like but you are listening to things that makes you Christ-like. And so it is not just mere words that we are speaking about, but we are speaking about the God-breathed word that comes to a believer and it is unlocked by faith. And so Christ, on the great day of the feast, he says that uh, my flesh is bread indeed, and my blood is a drink indeed. And whosoever eateth of this bread shall not hunger anymore. And he shall, uh, he, he shall pass from uh, condemnation 
to life. And that is exactly what we want at such an hour as this. At that time when he said that uh, 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 whoever feeds on my flesh, he is really taking in life and taking in uh, uh, true meat. Uh, there were many people who murmured about this, and there are many people who murmur this day about when the word of God is spoken, and uh, uh, they, they, they take variants and they take disputes about it. But uh, we are told that uh, uh, it is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh profited nothing, the words that I speak unto they are spirit and life. And so if you start quarreling with this word, if you start disputing with it, you are disputing with getting the spirit and getting the eternal life. And so uh, uh, we, we are told that uh, uh, the commandment is life everlasting. And I know that this commandment is a life everlasting. This is what uh, uh, we are told that uh, in, uh, uh, in John chapter 12, and I know that this commandment is life and everlasting. And while uh, uh, he was talking about uh, the people feeding on his flesh as the true bread of heaven. Others started walking away from him. And this is where I want to finish. Uh, when we receive the words of God, as the word of God, when we drink in the words, we receive life, God's life then no Christian can possibly live without the word. And the weakness among Christians is due to the fact of not eating and drinking the word. When we receive the word of God in this way, it becomes a part of our being. And in receiving the word, we receive Christ. And this is life which is in Christ in you, the hope of glory. And so while he was speaking of these things, that people should feed on his flesh and they'll be feeding on his word. They'll be drinking of his blood. Many people say that this is a hard saying. Let me turn to John as I finish here. The book of John. And uh, chapter 6. I'll read as we bring this to a close. From verse 59, we are told. This thing said he about eating of his flesh and drinking of his blood in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Many therefore of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, this is a hard saying who can hear it. This is a hard saying who can hear of it. When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples mama that it, he said unto them, Doth this offend you? What and if you shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? It is the spirit that quickened the flesh, profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. And he said, Therefore, and he said, therefore said unto you that no man come unto me except it were given unto him of my father. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, will you go away? And the next statement is the statement we are stopping at and think about that. Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Whom shall we go? Peter asked. And uh, I ask you the same thing. Whom shall we go? There's no one else we can go to. We will go to Jesus Christ who have the word of life. And when he speaketh his word, let us take it in. And we will have just opened a door for him to feast with us. Because he says in John chapter 14, when Judas, not Iscariot, asked him, how will thou manifest yourself unto us? He says, if anyone doeth my word, if anyone doeth my commandment, then I and my father will come and have an abode in him. 
What does he mean by that? If we take the word of God as it is written, as it is spoken, as it is revealed unto us, we have just opened an avenue of the Holy Spirit to dwell in us because the Father and the Son dwelleth in us by their spirit. And so today you can start dissecting the word of God and say this is inspired, this is not inspired. We'll be closing the avenue of the Spirit of God to work in your heart. I pray that we be like Peter and say that we have no other place to go but to Christ who has the word of life. And may you possess this sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Shall we pray? Shall we pray? Dear Father in heaven, we want to possess nothing but thy own spirit. But this spirit comes <clears throat> by being unlocked by faith, and faith cometh by hearing and by hearing of thy word. So we surrender just uh, this moment. That uh, as the letters is written, the letters are written to the churches, and one letter is for us, Laodiceans, that um, we may open our ears, that we may be careful of what we listen, for the Spirit is speaking to the churches. And Lord, help us to hear what the Spirit speaketh, because it can't contradict your word. Glory and honor be unto thee. Help us to love this word, not as information, but as saving word. This is my prayer in Christ Jesus' name. Amen.